Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. This video is going to be a video tutorial to recap uh, to recap one of the double exposure tutorials we went over in class. So the first thing you're going to do is you want to create a mask, right? You want to select our uh, our subject in this case our light bulb, right? With a mask, we went over two of them in class. One of them is the magnetic lasso, where you're basically kind of guiding, uh, you know, these points throughout the body. So you could do this, certainly. And then once you hit the last dot, right, and there you go. And if you decide to use your move tool in combination, you can actually just cut it out of its place. And then um, also like drag it, like we learned with the playing card onto another document. And you know, here you can do whatever you'd like, right? But we're gonna actually just stay on our document here and we'll go over another way we can uh, select our light bulb, right? So we just use the magnetic lasso. If I hit Command D now, Command D, I can deselect my light bulb. If I forgot the shortcut, I can actually go up to select and deselect, right? And actually tells you the shortcut right there as well. So deselect it so that I can create another uh, mask, but this time using the selection tool, the quick select tool, right? And this one's a little different. Uh, notice up here in the options bar, I'm on the, uh, the, the one with the little plus sign next to it, right? So it kind of adds when we click or drag. And in this case, it was very smart. It actually uh, just found its way after two clicks, but we want to get the whole um, image here. So we're going to click down here a few more times and right see how now it kind of bleeds off the bulb itself. No big deal. If we go back up to the options bar, we can get the subtraction selection tool, right? And kind of just nudge it back there. Maybe I have to make mine smaller, right? And boop, 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 boop. So some tools are going to naturally be better there, uh, for masking um, other things, right? For the most part, this one worked pretty well because it's just a nice uh, round shape that you know does a pretty well job uh, distinguishing itself from the, the background. Now, one thing you can also do before you actually click out of your, your selection tool, right? Right now, I'm, if you notice, I'm still on my quick select tool. If I right click my image, I can feather my mask. Uh, Feathering is not, uh, it's not, you know, mandatory. In fact, actually, I guess technically nothing we do is mandatory, but if you would like to maybe smoothen out your selection mask a bit, right, so that it's not quite as jaggedy. In this case, the bulb is round, so it's not quite noticeable. So I got my light bulb here, and like I said before, we could click and drag him uh, out and put him, you know, onto another document, but this time we're actually going to stay on this JPEG file. Um, and really what we're going to do is cut out the background. There's several different ways we could do this. Uh, one way we're going to do is actually just hit Command J. Right, so I have my background here selected, this layer. Hit Command J. And now you'll notice we have two layers. If I turn off the visibility of our first layer, right, you'll notice we have our light bulb free from its original uh, white background, right? So it's a, it's a free bulb. Right, okay. So we don't need our original background layer anymore. So I'm gonna just cl click and drag and hover over the garbage can, drop and delete, delete that one. Uh, now I'm gonna stay organized by naming my layer bulb, okay. Next thing we're gonna do before anything, I just actually wanna increase my you know palette space a little bit. So I'm gonna hit crop. Normally when we think of crop, we think of you know maybe uh, cropping out what's not needed. In this case, we're actually going to grab the handlebars and maybe expand our workspace just a tad. Um, yeah, that looks... Uh, sure, that looks good. Let's just recenter our bulb a little bit. Yeah, sure. Okay, good. Now, next step, we're actually going to create a background plate for our lonely light bulb. Go to this button right here. It has a host of effects and adjustment layers that we can add to our layers panel. For now, we're going to create a solid color background, and I could make any color I want, um, but actually I'm going to do the counterintuitive thing and actually make a white layer. 
uh, despite actually just deleting uh, the white background from the light bulb, but you'll see why uh, throughout this demo. So now because of layer priority, the bulb is not seen, right? Because it is on the bottom of the stack. So we're just gonna click, drag and reorder them. So now that the light bulb is on top, good. Next step, let's go to our tabs bar, right? Where I have my city photo. I'm gonna click, drag, drop and we'll notice that it is uh, it is a lot larger than what we uh, have going so what do we do make sure our layer is selected command T and then just resize it right now before I actually finish finalizing where I want it um, we actually do want this layer on the top I'm gonna name him uh, city I'm gonna name him city and for our city I actually want this layer on top before I actually go there I want to just demonstrate one thing again about right priority so if I go to my effects layer and I actually want to turn my light bulb uh, black and white I want to desaturate it and I could do several things right I could actually just hit command shift U, and it works you can't really tell because it looks pretty black and white already but I could do that but instead for the purpose of this uh, this demo, I'm actually just going to use an effect right here. I'm going to go to the black and white one. And now, right, everything turned black and white. That's because our black and white adjustment layer is at the top of the stack. And so if I were to move it down one under the bulb but above the city, the city would remain, right, it would remain... Um, black and white. We don't want that. We only want the light bulb to be black and white. So here is a very important thing to know, and that is called a clipping mask, right? So if we look to our properties, uh, properties tab right here, properties basically corresponds to um, whatever adjustment layer or effects we've placed. So if we were to place another one, for example, hue and saturation, right? then the properties now changed because it now it corresponds to this hue and saturation uh, layer. So I'm actually going to delete that. Uh, we only want to have the properties for black and white. So for this, there's a little button right here that you can click to add a clipping mask. Once I hit that, this layer, this black and white clipping mask will only apply to the light bulb and it should leave the city layer alone, right? So the city layer should get its color back when I hit this button. There we go, see? So now black and white only affects the layer beneath it, which is bulb. Not all of the layers, but just bulb. Similarly, if I were to you know, unclip it, you could also just right click and create clipping mask. Boom, same thing, right? Okay, great, 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 great. Our light bulb, although it does not look any different, it is in black and white, which is uh, um, funny, I think. But now we're gonna take our city layer, drag it to the top, good. And now to help us position where we want to place our city layer, I want to actually put this umbrella uh, person inside the light bulb. So I'm going to turn down its opacity. Opacity, right, determines how visible our certain layer is. So I'm going to you know, just turn it down just enough so I can see it. And then I'm going to position this layer. Actually, I might need to Command T to make it a little bit bigger again, right? Still maybe bigger. All right. There we go. And if your thing keeps snapping, you can actually just use the keys to kind of help position. So I like this image right here. I'm going to hit enter to confirm. This in itself, right, technically is a double exposure. If you turn down the opacity of your layers enough that they kind of work in concert with each other, then yes, you actually have achieved a double exposure. But we're not going to stop here. We can do a little bit more, I think. Um, not to say that there's anything wrong with this image, but we could do a little bit more. So I'm gonna, once you're satisfied with where your layer is placed, you can raise the opacity back up to 100. Now I'm gonna create a mask for this layer, this city layer, but not just any mask. I want the exact uh, cutout of this light bulb, right? And to do that, right, to do that, I'm just gonna hold Command while I click this thumbnail, this icon of the light bulb, right? And boom, right, you can kind of see the outline already is there. 
I'm going to make sure my city layer is selected while our mask of our bulb is active. And then now I'm going to apply a mask to the city layer, right? There we go. So in a moment, you're going to see what the importance of having these extra uh, masks are. But in the meantime, I'm going to duplicate this bulb layer, right? You can do it several ways, but you can just right click, duplicate layer, and bulb copy, that is fine. I'm going to drag him to the top of the stack, right? And now because he's at the top of the stack, we see the bulb, we don't see anything below it unless we turn off the visibility. So I'm going to go to normal and you can select. Honestly, again, this is not to say one is better than the other. For example, multiply works actually very well with this one. Um, I actually really like the contrast here. But because we're trying to do something that maybe teaches us a few more, you know, tricks and tips with tools here and there, we're actually going to, oh, that's pretty cool actually. Uh, we're going to go to lighten, okay? Lighten, and I think we'll probably have to lower the opacity. This is entirely to your discretion, but I'll, uh, I'll do 50. Okay, sure, 50. We're going to add a mask for this top layer, just like we did the city one. And again, I'm going to tell you why in a second. But first, make sure your bulb copy is selected. Hit the mask button. And then now you should have a mask, although albeit different from kind of the silhouette right here, but you should have a mask for each one, okay? So the reason why we wanna have a mask kind of tethered to each of these two layers is, so instead of painting uh, something directly over this bulb right here, we have like a little safety skin above it. I'm actually gonna grab my brush tool and I wanna make sure my opacity is not at 100. 100 is too strong. I think anything below 40, you might have to go back and, you know, play with it. But 40 typically is a good starting point. And then for our color swatches here, make sure it is black and white with black being in the foreground. And I'm going to show you something right now with the top layer selected, not just the top layer, but the mask, right? Not the bulb, but the mask. Okay. So we're painting over this mask with our, like I said, our makeup, so to speak. So notice what happens when I paint over it. Right, so I'll do it again, but it's really subtle, but really we're kind of coloring it in, so to speak, I guess. The city becomes more visible, right? Okay. So for example, if I just color them in the person they become definitely more uh, visible, right? So now if I were to, you know, select this silhouette, right? The mask chained to the city layer, right? Again, not the city, but the, the little thumbnail. And then now if I were to paint over it, it kind of takes away what we did, right? And for example, we don't want the little, it wouldn't make sense for this part of the bulb to be um, kind of, kind of uh, double exposed. So we're gonna kind of paint it over so that, right, we get the just natural kind of metal screw or the socket, I suppose. Um, there we go, so good. So now only the bulb kind of has the image itself and maybe if you wanna go back in and paint it again, right? So that looks kind of good, I think. Um, so, right, this is kind of a neat trick for when we get into more complicated um, compositing techniques, but right, we can apply an extra layer or a mask to our layers and then paint over it to achieve different effects. So very cool. Now you could stop here again, but let's take it another step forward if you're feeling, uh, feeling adventurous. Um, I'm going to duplicate this city layer, okay? Uh, now, you can do that with Command-J or right-click, duplicate layer. Okay, city copy, cool. Now, I'm going to delete this one, right? I can just drag it, right? Make sure you're not dragging the whole layer, but just dragging this one to the garbage. Just 
yes, delete now, right? Because of that, we kind of freed this layer. Originally, it was a city, but now we freed it from the confines of its uh, kind of its, remember its cookie cutter mask, right? So everything is kind of flying off the edges. It's exactly the same layer as this, just now it doesn't have the mask containing it. So what we're going to do here is actually before we do anything, I want to change our background to to black. Okay, so I'm going to double click the left one, and then make it maybe a closer to black. Okay, and you'll see why in a second. The city will show up a lot better once in a different blend mode over black. So, um, in fact, I can show you right now. So, again, you can do whatever you want, but oops, make sure you have the city copy selected. So, you can do whatever you'd like, right? Again, not one is particularly better. It just depends on what you're trying to go for. And in this case, I'm just trying to show you some tips that you can do uh, when we get our, our project assigned. So um, again, a lot of cool options, right? This one's kind of cool too in itself. It just looks like the world around it is kind of kind of all jacked up, right? So it's actually kind of a cool, cool effect, I think. But for today, we're gonna stick to lighten, right? Because we just, just kind of the theme for today, right? But to go back to my issue, my point here, if I were to make this white, right, we couldn't really see it. So we're gonna stick to black. There, awesome. Now, I know what you're thinking. Are we gonna add another mask here so we can paint? Yes, if you were thinking that, you are correct. Uh, but instead of just adding a mask, right, if I were to click this, it would add a mask. But I wanna add a black mask because again, as we just saw here, it shows up easier right it works better so i'm going to hold option this time with the city copy layer selected and then hold add mask okay if i press add mask without holding option it'll give me a white mask i want a black one so option city copy selected mask button click there we go black mask cool now with my brush selected if i swap my swatches to white now when i paint around it it kind of shows up right okay so i'm actually going to switch it to maybe uh, a little bit lower maybe 25 again i kind of want to give it that um almost that light bulb radiating effect right so just kind of clicking it little by little little much then obviously switch to the black swatch and then you can kind of take it away but for us uh, I think we're okay right now um, okay now we didn't really go over how to save and export uh, last class so I'll do it right now if I go to file save right uh, this will save over this light bulb picture I have right I don't want that I want to save as and Save on my hard drive, so I don't trust the cloud. Uh, right, I'm gonna make sure I want to save it somewhere now. If you save it as a Photoshop document, this is a PSD document. You'll see it on your computer as a .psd. That basically means when you open it up, you open it up to get this. You get the workspace. You don't get something presentable. If we want to publish something, right, share on Instagram, online, whatever it may be, we want to save as a JPEG or a PNG. Um, so make sure you save it as that if you're ready to turn in your assignment or share it somewhere. Okay, so um, I hope this was a help, helpful tutorial. Um, again, if you're able to get this, then I highly suggest you try to nail this one, right? Okay, you have all the materials provided for you within the links on Canvas. So um, please go ahead again make sure you can at least do this one all right um, this one if you're not able to I know it's a lot more difficult to mask in fact I probably kind of didn't feather this one although it really needed it right because you can see this really rough edge here so shame on me but um, yeah all right everyone hope you have a good time doing this please pop back into zoom if you need help from me or pop in during office hours um, you know, that's what I'm there for and, you know, it gets kind of lonely. So you'd be actually doing me a favor. Um, all right. 
So hope you have fun with this uh, and I'll catch you next class. All right. Bye.